In 1949, China changed her system of government, and within five years, an irresistible flood of a million people poured over the frontier into Hong Kong. The poverty of the people was severe. Many of them came out without anything. Some had lost uh, members. They had no money, they had no clothes, they had no dwelling. Some, in the beginning, lived in these huts. They built themselves small dwellings. You might have a family of four children. Some had their mother-in-laws, father-in-laws in the family. And then Mary Noel, with the help of several others, built the first 200 brick homes. And the first refugees that came out were eligible for those. To help the people in the beginning, Mary Noel gave food, rice, weekly, butter, flour that they could make noodles with. And depending on the number of people in a family, determined how much they would receive. So that was a beginning of helping them to have the basics, food, clothing, uh, shelter. Taiwan, which is a resettlement area, the government had not been there yet. Mary and our sisters were the first ones there. And later, Mary and our sisters invited the Mary and our fathers to be there. Years and years later, then the government moved in to um, help out. But we, Mary and our sisters were the pioneers. They just level different layers of the mountain, and then they make steps. They put stones there to make steps. Uh, one time I counted 350 steps I went up to the top of the mountain where they, they live. And there I was perspiring with a habit on, and I said to myself, oh, only for you, God, I won't be able to do it for anybody else. I was drenched. And then at that time, you don't carry water to drink. So you just wait until you get home at noon time. So that was the hardest thing, but it, it was the happiest days of my life because um, you see the need and you see how people respond to you and not just receiving, but they help you to give care to other people too. Uh, they used to call me Dai Yi San, you know, Lantau Mountain, because I was so big and I was very, and especially in the habit, I was so tall and big. They didn't seem to mind it. And I'm never conscious that I'm that tall. That's the way I was, was you know. The, what I did mostly in Hong Kong was what we call parish work. But it also entailed a lot of social work because we had to see to that the people had something to eat. You can't teach them about God or things like that if they have an empty stomach. Huh? And then it was when we had no water for a year and every four days you got four hours of water. The people in the little houses, and, and they didn't have it. It was very hard, but you know that you didn't hear that many fights. There were enough fights over it because somebody took my bucket or somebody took my pole or something. But on the whole, they, they were very good about obeying that law huh? you know, and lining up. They're very used to queuing. That's a, ch a Hong Kong expression, queuing up, huh? And pai uh, uh, doi, huh? And I remember one day I was in line and somebody tried to get in front of me and I yelled at him, pai huh? doi, and he, they, they, of course, the Westerner talking Chinese, you know, so that he got in line for the rest of us. The great majority went to swell the hundreds of thousands living on the roofs and the hillside. The most disastrous of these was that on Christmas night when 50,000 people lost what flimsy homes they had. Oh, don't talk about fire. Fire. I have loads of films with fire, 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 fire. We always had many fires. So we were always alert to the fact when a fire started, we would always run to some of our old folks whom we knew where they lived to help put them to pull out the, if, it, if they were in the midst of that area, to their men toys and things like that. When this influx came in and you had all these squatter areas with nobody really to take care of them. The governor wasn't that rich at the time either. They needed all the help. Marinal sisters were willing to risk. I mean, you, you might make a terrible flop in those things, but you were willing to risk it. Marinal sisters went there, I mean like babes, babes in the woods. 
they had to learn everything. And in those days, you didn't have TV, you didn't have the internet. So you had to get through a culture shock. You had to get through a language shock. Incident that I remember fondly. Every September, we would usually would have hurricanes in Hong Kong. And when our people were living in those wooden huts, of course, one strong wind would just collapse everything, and there would be nothing left. So after the winds, Sister uh, Mary Diggins and I were able to go out and visit our people and to see in what way we could be helpful. I remember uh, as we were walking through the villages, this elderly lady, she was standing on the boards uh, that had collapsed. Nothing. The roof was gone, everything. And the first thing she said was, uh, can I invite you in to have a cup of tea? Yes, 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 yes. Something that I'll, I'll always remember. You know, that graciousness of the Chinese amid this disaster, that's all she could think of. Can I invite you in to have a cup of tea? Marvelous women, marvelous women.